thank you, Holy Father. Thank you for blessing us, giving us another Sabbath day. Thank you for all of your blessings and thank you for dying upon the cross for my soul. This, my sins, not only my sins, but for the sins of the world. And Jesus, I ask you to search my heart. See if there be any sin, any no harm sins, any thoughts in my mind, Lord. Give us a pure mind. We'll honor you and we'll praise you because we know that you said ever jotted and ever tittle. God, we're going to have to live by the word of God, Lord. That's our eh, teacher. It's our guide. It's the spirit of truth written. Lord, and I ask you to help me. Oh, God, move and bless us today. Nor my hand, Lord, nor my body, nor my vocals, Lord. Lord, let something supernatural, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, let it be so. As the psalmist David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. God, let it be so today. Three times in his life, Lord. He was anointed. Then you anointed him. No doubt every time he was anointed, he reached out always. Probably some of his anointings wasn't recorded. But God, he reached out for a fresh anointing. I ask you, Lord Jesus, I know I can't do it, God. I'm just... A vessel. Oh, Jesus. Look down upon us, Lord. Give everyone a fresh anointing. God, that's what has kept me going all these years. Is you keeping me with a fresh anointing. And I took that seriously, Lord, where the man of God in the Bible said, I, Lord, revive us again, that thou, your people, may rejoice in you. Lord, I pray it be so today. Open up our hearts, Lord. Open up our souls. Jesus, we pray, Lord, for all these precious brothers, pastors, and teachers, Lord, that you will bless them, bless their churches. Lord, bless the evangelists, Lord. The fields are white, but the evangelists are few going throughout the land, Lord, with the revival fires burning in their bones. Foreign countries never heard the gospel that needs soul winners need a men of God and women of God that risk their lives going into these dangerous areas to carry the gospel of the kingdom. God, you said we all has got to be born again. Oh, Jesus. We ask you, mighty God, help us, Lord. God, help us, Jesus. You get that freshness. Like David of the Bible kept that before you. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. God help us, Lord. I know I can't anoint them. I can just 
be the vessel that's you that's going to give them that supernatural anointing. God, just bless my strength. Bless my mind, Lord. Let my vocals, let my whole temple be full of your anointing for your glory. Because uh, there's so many discouraged preachers across the face of the land. God, I don't hear of some of the ones I heard a few years ago. God, move, look upon our country. Jesus, save us from what's happening in Washington, God. Lord, and what's happening across the country, in the states, Jesus, Christianity, disappearing. God, we pray that revive us again in this country. Stand up against these wicked leaders. God, you said when the wicked lead the sin, said in the word, but the righteous is leading, Lord, blessings come. God, we need you, God. Lord, if David said, revive us again. Let your people get back on track, Lord. Uh, have a true worship. Let your people rejoice in you. And Lord, I pray for every one of these needs. God, every one of these needs. God, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> let it be so. God, and all the ones that's been turned in, they've been, probably some of them two or three times, but God, there have been I know, over a thousand requests. Jesus, I know everybody that's attended ain't here today, Lord. He's some was, uh, from out of town could only be here through Thursday and some of them had to leave after Wednesday but Lord back at where their churches are Lord some of them way on up near on the border God we pray that you bless their churches revive their people Lord there was a group from Canada was in here a few days God I pray you bless them I know Canada right now is just about told it took over by unbelief they don't believe in God anymore like America's become last five or six years our country has lost their faith Lord Jesus down to 22 or 24 percent that was over a year ago when the polls was made we need you God we need you get these atheists out of these high offices, Lord. He's God, the same two-thirds of our judges now, federal judges, don't even believe in God. God, that dangers for this country because sometimes they make the law. God, I ask for your help. Oh, Jesus. I appreciate this country, God. They have sent me to... The nations abroad. God, they've sacrificed their offerings that I could go. Oh, Lord, I pray your blessing. Jesus and all the pastors, God here and the evangelists, bless them, Lord, with revival for our Lord. We just, this just getting in here, getting ready for the summer. God, we ask. Let revivals break out across this country. And we'll honor you, Lord. We'll praise you. If you've got a special need, lift up your hand. God, I pray for those that's got an uplifted hand that, that what their need is. That you're more than provide. God, in the name of Jesus. We believe. God, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that you 
or answer to prayer. God, I live by the prayers you answered. Jesus, God, keep me sanctified. God, keep me sanctified, Lord. When a storm clouds gather, when the battle gets rough, and the way gets hard, keep me sanctified. God, I want to be always a sacrifice vessel. Sister Terrell and I both, Lord, we've given our lives. She's given 22 years of her life, Lord. 20 of me, but 22 or 3 years of her life. She's given to you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, and I know these sisters out there and his brothers out there that's given their lives. God, at least they're serving you. God, everybody can't go. Somebody's got to sin, but God bless them. We'll honor you with all praises. I'm giving you the thanks. Giving you the thanks. And Lord, let us fresh anointing, a special anointing being here today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hand to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God. Be here standing in your place with this horn. But God is going to take you to give them that anointing, that holy anointed to pray to read the Bible all in the name of Jesus we honor you we praise you we give you most holy things thank you Lord for teaching me how to read the Bible and God and that's about the only thing I can read I thank you God it's the good word of God and bless today Lord let Soul winners come out of this service. Give us preachers. Give the ministers a fresh anointing. God, and some of these that come through here, oh Father, heaven and earth, through the name of Jesus, I ask you that something special happen to them. God, and we'll honor you for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to uh, start out here in Psalms 85. And this has been a, a real blessing to my life. Uh, if, 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 see if somebody can find me some fresh handkerchiefs. I done done away with all of them. I need a couple of fresh handkerchiefs. Tell Brother Dixon out there. Need some fresh handkerchiefs. Thank you, Jesus. To wipe my sweat with. This is Psalms 85. This scripture. And a few more. It's what unveiled to me uh, this revelation to do something with God for God. Psalms 85. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You brought back the captive of Jacob. You've forgiven the iniquity of your people. You've covered all their sins. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned yourself from the fierce of the angry. Turn us, O oh God, of our salvation. Cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you draw out your anger to all generation? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Revive us again. You know, that's been a, a part of God's Word there that's helped me along the way. You know, I've, uh, a lot of preachers they lose their anointing because they maybe got it a few years ago but you know it's like a new car 
that it's going to get old. <coughs> it's like your clothes. You know, they're going to, somewhere you keep dry cleaning them or washing them. It's going to wash out ever what that is. It makes them stand out. <coughs> and ever, you have to replace. That's the way it is with our bodies. Our bodies, we the temple of the Holy Ghost. But we have to. <coughs> David said, here I'll read here in a moment, that I should be anointed with fresh oil. You know that, that when, when first time I got anointed by some, someone else, Back in the early days when I was just in my early 20s when I started preaching when I was 19, 18 and long enough about my birthday. Could have been on either side. And them old preachers, they weren't like these preachers are today. You know, a lot of them called me their son. And you know, and they looked at you like, but the preachers today They've been to all these schools of learning and didn't learn nothing either. <clears throat> Not to help people. You ain't never going to learn from a... I, I tried a Bible school for about six weeks. You ain't never going to learn uh, God in a Bible school. You know? That's just like used to when I was a... What little bit of education I got when I was a kid. That... Uh, Didn't take long to forget it. Because you know, y'all know, most of you probably heard my story. I didn't start school at 11. And went in there in the first grade that first day. And the kids laughed at me because I was 11 years old in the first grade. And I never went back to school no more. I got on the school bus when it stopped at our house. Got off at the next house. Hid in the woods all day. When he stopped there, let that little boy off there, I jumped back on, got off at our house. Mama never did know the difference. You know, till the last day of school when the principal came and wondered why I hadn't been to school but one day in that whole year. <laughs> boy, when Mama said, David, where you at? She called me that name I don't like. And so this principal is telling me you ain't been in school just that one day. Boy, you don't lie to mama. I said, well, mama got off at the next stop down there because I didn't want them kids laughing at me. And that was all the high school I got. <laughs> but you know, the Lord wanted that way but that, that I wouldn't learn to read nothing but the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. You put some of the same stuff in a book before me and I can't read it. The, the, I was sometimes back a few years ago when I was going through that scrutiny by those preachers uh, two different big denominations was uh, uh, preparing me for ordination and all that. They told me, said, uh, you read the Bible by memory. You don't know that Bible. You know it by memory. I said, well, what's the difference? If, if, if I, I said, they throw me a book and I couldn't read it. I said, you, you memorize what's in there. How's that good or bad? I think that's pretty good myself. You know, it's kept me out here. Thank you, Jesus. If I make it to October 60 years, 39 and holding, I mean, out here evangelizing. I'm not just talking about preaching. I was a street preacher for six years. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. You know, because I never learned nothing. That's what I've always tried to teach. Uh, it is if we'll get this word in us. You know, John 15 said, "If you, I'm the vine and you the branches. And if, if everybody that abides in me and I in him. You know what I'm telling you? The work should I do. You know how I many know that Jesus doesn't set this thing out. That's right. He done laid the pattern. Yes. He done laid the way, straight as a gate and narrow as a way that He has set out for all of us. If, if He had His will, there wouldn't be all these 10,000, uh, probably more now, there's over 10,000. This was two or three years ago. 
Art O'Reilly was talking about all these different churches, not criticizing, but just telling about all this stuff. You know, he's pretty good on that stuff, and he don't do it to fight people. And uh, it's a shame. And he's telling how Christianity throughout the whole nation, since this guy that some of y'all put up here in Washington, that Christianity has left our country. And a lot of people ain't got no sense because the Bible said when the wicked rule, what? Sin. Sin. You get a pastor and his wife running around here in pants all over town and shorts, then the members are going to do it. Ain't that right? And you get a man and he don't correct his daughters when they leave home, that's them. But raise him daughter and they run around here in pants and shorts and people see their, your kids running around here and they still at home doing that stuff. They're not going to have no faith in you and they ain't going to have no faith in the church that they go to because that preacher ain't got the guts. What I call it back when I was growing up, they call it, you ain't got the guts. I've had people say, I'm going to whoop you. I said, you ain't got the guts if you don't try it. I was, I'll whoop you if you have to hit you and run and come up on your backside. <laughs> I used to be good at that. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise God. You know. And that's the truth. A lot of people is, uh, is coming up on people's backside. And that's what the devil's doing now. He's coming up on people's backside. And he's putting out all these churches out here that don't care how they live. You know it's the truth. And now... People don't believe in nothing no more. Did you know people used to respect Christians, even the Baptist people, were, were people that didn't, when they got saved, you, the, when I got saved in the Baptist church, uh, hearing these testimonies of these preachers, how they was alcoholics and how they was thieves and whoremongers and all that, and after God saved them, they didn't want that no more. And then I got to go in the Pentecostal church about six, eight months later. A little old friend I had. And of course, they like to carry me to devil. He's talking in tongues and all that stuff. And dancing and shouting. I thought, my Lord, that's what I come out of. When I, was, <laughs> I was a day before and I got saved during the Grand Opera. I said, I've been singing out of the uh, honky-tonks and things, you know. And that's what they do out there. <laughs> That scared me to death. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I realize there's, there's a different honky tonk than the honky tonks. Thank you, Jesus. God's people shout. It didn't take me long to realize that you get the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You're either going to be leaping or jumping or dancing or shouting. And if you was a dancer out there before you got saved, you get the Holy Ghost. He's going to put some real dance in you. Hallelujah. Glory. But the Bible said, come out of the world and be separated. And what kept David through all the things he'd done? David said, to the Lord, my horn shall you exalt like the horn of an end corn, a while off, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You know, history says that David had three different anointings on his life. Three different anointings on his life. And that's the reason that a lot of people don't understand why all of the wrong he done and Killed a, had a man kill, put him out there on front line to get him killed to get his wife. All of that. But the Lord God forgave him. Now don't go out here and count somebody killed to get the wife now. <laughs> I don't know whether God will save you or not. <laughs> but anyway, I mean I'm just showing you how good God is. All these guys wasn't born uh, uh, out of the Pharisees and the Sadducees religion. Most people, they fought Jesus. They put Jesus out uh, as a false. They put Jesus out as a phony. Even uh, when he was raising the dead, multiplying the fish and loaves, and feeding the multitudes, 
by the thousands when he just had a, a few little fish and a few loaves of bread, they still didn't give him the praise that there had to be a high power of running the life of Jesus. Jesus always said, my father and I, he never did go out there and deny God. He said, I, my father and I, we're like one. Uh, and what he wants me to do, he's one in me. It's not I that worketh, but my father liveth in me. And he taught me and you how to be vessels like he and I, as I am, he said, in this world, so are you. He said, as I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You that got a sniff of that oil. Uh, you're the temple of the whole. Me and you are temples of God. God said, I live in you. I walk in you. And the works that I do. You know, all that is faded out. Just about it. But when I'm uh, five or six months after I was saved in the Baptist church, I was always testifying. This is why I even um, knew what it, what it was dealing with me that I was to do something for God myself. And I sang a little story, a little old preacher, a holiness preacher, wanted me to go to their church and sing. And he kept telling me on Saturday nights, and I said, I can't do that. He said, on Sunday. I said, no, I can't do that. On Sunday, I said, no, I can't do that. Because all the churches in that Saturday, Sunday, and when he named Friday, uh, our church didn't have no service. I said, I can go then. Went in there with that uh, guitar, you know. Uh, got all them guitars, you know. The Martin Company has always blessed me with guitars. I, the one I've got here, they just give that to me a while back. But, and uh, one showed up at our house a while back on how it got there. All I know it was there. And I'm, it's a Martin too. I got 19 or 20 of those Martin guitars, every brand they built. <laughs> That's what I want to get from God. I said, God, if you would start sending me every blessing that ain't got down by one of your angels <laughs> and everything. But anyway, the Martin guitar, they, their, their guitars, the necks are never uh, bow, and they are made. They know guitar in the world. Well, that's the way uh, that Christianity is. I don't care who gets it. Thank God it's still pure religion. Let me know the Bible said pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep themselves unspotted from the world. How many know that's great to keep themselves? And David is saying 85 Psalms, Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captive of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered their sins. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned yourself from the fist of your anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation. Cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry for us forever? Will you draw out your soul to the to all generations. He's doing it. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Revive us again that your people may rejoice. You know, we need to have to know that me and you need a fresh anointing. Now, the Lord willing, I'm going to get a fresh anointing and, and uh, uh, Tulsa. Sister is going to be there. And I'm going to get a fresh anointing in Tulsa. I haven't had a fresh anointing this year yet. And I won't do it unless she's there. And uh, Sister Terrell's there to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, but I'm getting back here to Matthew. You know why the right now Christianity is the lowest it's ever been in this country right now. I know a lot of people don't like me to say it, but the Bible itself said it. When the wicked rule, you know. 
recently a whole state just knew a woman was a lesbian made her governor now that bad ain't it I don't care if you don't like that I'm telling you something I heard the president himself said when he's talking about you know he tried to get a law that man can marry man but thank God we had enough up there on both sides to stop it when he first went in that the two men could get married Somebody asked me about it, said, what do you think about it? I said, well, I never have figured out who's going to be the who. <laughs> I just like a bull running around here chasing another bull. A cow chasing a cow. I mean, it's sad, ain't it? Animals got better sense than that. I don't care if you don't like that. If you believe in homosexuality, you'd be down yonder with all that bunch that went to hell in Lot's day. Did you know Lot, God burnt the whole, and it was over, oh, and the uh, scores of thousands and thousands in Sodom and Gomorrah when God destroyed that city? Did you know I went over three times and that city is still in ruins? Nobody never built. Has anybody else ever been over there? I've been over there three times and saw Sodom and Gomorrah. It's still, they still just like it was when the fire quit burning. And so many people that was burnt. The wrath of God, they're like a, a, a pillar of salt standing out there. Have you ever been over there? But I've been over there like a pillar of salt. And I want you to know that, that, that guy that escaped and his wife looked back, he told her, you know, God told him, don't look back. And she looked back. I seen her. She's a pillar of salt. And I've been over there through. And the last time I went over there, uh, you know, the first time I went, she was like a whole woman, but nothing but pure salt standing there. Well, later on I went over there and I noticed that, that they had a lot of rains and it was sort of cutting her. And then uh, people going over, breaking her fingers. And the last time I went over there, which was, I know I've been over three or four times, people breaking her fingers. All my fingers were breaking, but she's still standing there. They tell me some of the people have been over there, she's still there, but she's, the rain and all that hit her, you know, short, but she turned to a pillar of salt because she looked back to sodomy. Now, if that ain't dangerous, that ain't dangerous, and they're trying to right now in this country, and the president legalized it, but the Congress said the whole country ought to vote on that, and they got down to uh, 40 something countries, 47 or something, or, or, or so some in there voted against it, and they stopped it, and they didn't go no further. Let me tell you something right now, and uh, we don't want the other uh, rest of the country was done, but I thank God, even though they may be shot him in every state, that people out there practice that saying, but at least that's ever state that voted, voted against sodomy, voted against man marrying a man. Somebody asked me about it. So what do you think about it? I said, well, who's going to be the who? You know, ain't no kind of way two women can get married, two men can get married. You know, and it's just a, it's an ungodly situation. We need a revival. I said, and you're the only hope. And you go out to these other churches, these other churches ain't even reminding people of this. 90% of these churches out there, even the, the Baptists used to cry about it. They used to warn us kids growing up, and I know y'all were probably growing up, even your parents, you be careful, call all the schools. Every once in a while, there'd be one of them silly guys, you know, somebody around there, like a woman, you know, you, you can tell them. You see somebody doing that, you better run. If it's a man, you better go the other way. He's a she. I know you don't like that. And they're trying to pass a law to to, that you can't preach against this. Right now they're trying to do it. They're threatening, taking our license, threatening, taking away our privilege. But I'm going to preach it anyway. And you better preach it. I said, you better preach it. And if God anoints you today, he not anointing you to get out here and play sin. He not anointing you to get out here and play the devil. He's anointing you to preach this gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Without compromise, without doubt, without, without cutting it out here and, and afraid to speak this, afraid to speak that. God wants you to stand up with holy boldness. If enough of us to start standing up, we can run that 
devil out of town. I said, we can run that devil out of the churches. I said, we can run that devil out of the world. How to get him over here and put him in hell where he belongs. Hallelujah. We need a revival of holiness. We need a revival of come out of the world and be separated. We need a revival, touch not, taste not, have not that which is unclean. That's what the Bible said. Come out of the world and be separated. Say the Lord. God, I am not you just to get out here and make a living. He's anointing you to stand up for the truth. He'll provide your living. Let God put fire in your bones. Cry out against sin. That's what's the matter. Preachers ain't crying out against sin. I've heard them say, well, they won't come to back to church. Give them about one day in hell, they'll come back. I remember when I was coming up, they, people would testify how they, they let that sin devil and how they went through a time that God let them experience hell. You know, the night I got saved, I'd ever ready to step on a stage that was going to put me to Nashville. Opry. And about two minutes before I was to walk out, that suit I had, I become, I went, I went to hell for a few moments. That suit becomes soaking wet. And I was in hell for a few seconds. And a voice spoke, said, Go to church right now and get saved. This is where you're going if you do what you're about to do. And that changed my world. There ain't nothing worth going to hell over. <laughs> ain't nothing worth going to hell. Thank you, Jesus. It's a time that uh, back when I came in, the Bible said strive. Sometimes you got to strive to get in the straight gate. It wasn't easy. It wasn't too hard on me. I didn't have no kind of habits and that one experience. <clears throat> fixed it, but that wasn't my dream. I don't believe I'd ever drink or smoke or none of that stuff, but you don't know till you get out there. I was raised against all that stuff. My dad was a holiness man. I, I saw his grave uh, uh, before. When I was down there, well, Fabio went back to my hometown and preached a meeting and had this tent wouldn't hold them if it's the one they put up. I don't know which one to put up. And hadn't been back since I was here when I was a cripple. But I want you to know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the people are so happy. You know, they, 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 a lot of people have sort of kept up, I guess, through all this mess we got. You know, everything is, all we got to do is get a little box of a thing. It tell you about everything in the world, ain't it? Yep. I don't even have to do all that stuff, and I'm glad I don't. I see people sitting right here playing that crazy stuff all day long. Some people are addicted playing with all that stuff. <laughs> But even though those people's worthy, they were so thrilled that I came out of that uh, the, that area there where I had that had that great meeting and one preacher, one preacher there that that some of his folks knew me when I started out. He was not, uh, you know, he, he was just in his forties, but he went out there and paid. Went into the thousands of dollars. That's where we had such a crowd there. He spent he spent thousands and thousands of dollars advertising all over, and uh, that that I was coming back here after being healed there in that hospital, which ain't even operating no more. After God, all that and such a revival we had. Thank you, there, Pale City, in that area, Alabama. God is still God. They still people out there. 
And I preached holy, and then people didn't get mad at me. You know, they come and said, I'm so glad that you've come. And let them, said, some people said, you'd come and I was like the rest of them. But I'm so glad that you're still preaching like you was when you left this part of the country. You know, a lot of people, they, they, they don't want you to compromise. I said, a lot of people don't want you to come. My, they want you to stand out there with it. Even though it might hurt their feelings, they still don't want you to, to blind their eyes so they go to hell. They want you to lift up a standard for, for them and for God. But somewhere out there, if you ever live for God, how many has ever said that before you got saved? If I ever get saved, I want to know I'm saved. I want to quit my way. I want to be transformed. You ever said that before you got saved? I want to do right. How many has ever said, I don't want to be a hypocrite? And I've changed that hypocrite to hippo snipper. <laughs> bunch of hippo snippers. That's all they are, a bunch of hippo snippers. But you get God in your life, you're going to want to strive to enter the straight gate. And that's what God wants to anoint you today. He wants to anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with power, not just with his horn. That'll, that'll, that'll put the outside, but you got to let God put it on the inside. I've been feeling uh, for the last few days when it's saying, when you anoint, if you'll open up your inside, God's going to anoint you with a freshness. He's going to give you a transformation. He's going to illuminate you. He's going to set you on fire. He's going to break these yokes off of you and put you back out there on the main line. How many wants to be on the main line? How many is tired to be on the back line? You was in the service. You didn't want to be on the back line. You weren't afraid to get up there and risk your life to save our country and other countries. You want to be on the front line. Hallelujah. It's time for the preachers uh, still afraid in their congregation get on the back line. Get on the front line. Hallelujah. Get out trying to praise God. Don't let somebody else go out there and do your fighting. You get in and do your fighting. You get in and do your preaching. You get in and do lifting up his man, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what God's going to anoint you to do today. He's going to anoint you with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. He's Lord. I said he's Lord. He's God, He's Father, He's Son. He's the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the fullness of everything. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you can be revived again. There's no kind of way that I could still be going up and doors opening all over the world for me. You just don't know. If I, it wouldn't have been that way if I hadn't stayed with the truth. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, even over here in them African countries, places, not, not no bouquets on me. It's this kind of preaching they want. Through an endeavor. They want you to, they want somebody to come, they don't want to go up there and afraid to preach against the Black Panther. A lot of people know who the Black Panther is. It's that, it's that God out there. Some man claimed to be a God. That's what the Black Panther is over there. And them people don't want to be that. that, that I mean, they're scared of him. Once they hear the word of God and get out under that under that spell. I've had three of them guys that I paralyzed them. Their, their, their witchcraft in my lifetime. I, I bound it and paralyzed and they couldn't do it no more. Then they come and got saved and started preaching and thanked me for it. Hallelujah. I said, now you, if you want to get saved, I, I'll pray for you. You can preach. But I paralyze it. And God paralyzed it. It's witchcraft. It's, it's Satan. And God paralyzed it. And thank God they couldn't tell nothing no more. One time in Macon, Georgia, I had a, a, a fortune teller down there. And she was hindering church and everything else, you know. People lying up our church. I'm going in there. Man, I went in there just like I was going to get mine told. I got in there. She said, what do you want? I said, I don't want nothing. I'm laying my hands on you. I'm casting that devil out of you. <laughs> I laid my hands, cast that fortune, tell the devil out of her. And she cut down the bull fortunes. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. As I'm always write it on Saturdays and Sundays, she'd be open at church time. And I bound that, and then she got saved. I said, now, when you want to get saved, uh, then you can start serving God, and you'll have a testimony sure enough. Thank God. And then she got saved. Hallelujah. And she thanked me. Glory to God. The God will save anybody that will give him an opportunity. And he renew your faith. He renew your vow. He renew your anointing. David said, I should be anointed. That's what you said. If you've been anointed before, be like my daddy, my father, my spiritual daddy, David, of the Bible. Hallelujah. And be like him. He got three anointings. Well, I've got seven, eight of them. Hallelujah. I was going to get it today, but Sister Terrell was getting ready and she's, uh, to leave. And she's, I told her to just go and get packed up. When I leave here, I want to leave here flying. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When I come to that Mississippi Bridge, I want that old van to jump on over the other side. But I'm going to go get ready to go to Tulsa. I feel like something's going to happen in Tulsa. Thank Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I appreciate how God moved here, how people attending the day services. But God, he just getting this ready for this, this minister's meeting here this fall. I know what he's doing. Hallelujah. He getting ready to ordain you. You pray and fast between you do a 30-day, a 15, a 20-day fast. 21-day fast is a good fast. 7-day, 14-day, 21-day, 21-8-day. 40 days is a Jesus fast. You get in here and get in them kind of fasts. Hallelujah. God will break all these old yokes. He'll renew your mind. He'll renew your faith. He'll renew your anointing. Thank God. Hallelujah. He'll put that, he'll connect to you and he'll connect you to him. Hallelujah. I believe today God's going to connect you to him. He's going to anoint you with fire in your bones. But David said, I'll be anointed. I'll be anointed. Look at Matthews. He said, go you therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name, not titles, of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatever I've commanded you, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Mark said, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Then he went on and said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Luke said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's what I hope happened for 18. How many won't say it? Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Anointed me to preach the gospel. That's what Luke said. And of course, and he wrote it in red because Luke was one of the greater writers. But he also said here in the last chapter, he said to them, this is written. And this is behooves Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead, that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning right here. And that's where it started. I said, that's where it started. And I tell you, John, I think, bless his heart. He was Jesus' high brother, called Mary and Joseph, fathered him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish. Aren't you glad that that John the Revelator thank you Jesus got that word I said got that word thank you Jesus and here Paul is writing uh, Peter done the, most of the writing of uh, Acts but Paul he played a great part in it thank you Jesus how God anointed Jesus on up Peter said but Peter, uh, I don't know, to start off with, he sort of didn't like Paul, but history said before the end that, that, that he made everything right. Thank the Lord. And I, I went over where they made that cross and stood right there where uh, just a few hours before Peter was crucified upside down, I, they, that right there where Paul and Peter and Peter asked Paul to forgive him for the way he treated him. 
on, on his way to crucifixion. They got all that there. Uh, they, they, I don't know they still do today. We had rocks and stuff. All that stuff was carved into it. The writing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy. Don't you want that? This is where God goes beyond anointing you with just oil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all. How many wants everything, your whole body, soul, and mind? I do. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost with power who went about doing good. He did all that was oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. We're witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews in Jerusalem from whom they slayed and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after. John 4 said, the fields are white. 316, you know what it says. God so loved the world. Let's get that vision back. I've never lost that vision. And I tell you, you need to get this because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. I feel good. But I know even guys in the Bible died earlier than I did. I'm, I'm as far as you're looking at the age part. And once you get in here, I advise you start searching, especially the first book of Corinthians and searching where God is giving gifts to men. You know, how many know we need, you don't just claim them. That's like claiming some man for a husband to get him he's a snake or claiming some woman, you know. And, I, and I've been down that road. You think somebody's boy is an angel and you find out you can't even, they, they want you to quit preaching. I tell you when Sister Terrell come into my life, she's right in there. Glory. The Lord spoke to me and said, now she'll stay with you all the way. Thank you, Jesus. All the way. We need God. Now, if we do need any more hands, if we got uh, probably 50 here, here, right here, and they, uh, everything. Father, as we come to this part, God, we know that you're the almighty of Abraham. You're the almighty of Isaac. And I pray you bless this, this old bull's horn in my hand, Lord. That more than just olive oil and a little bit of our holy oil in it, Lord. To sort of to sanctify it. Lord, give him a sanctified and a holy anointing. God, I pray for the ministers today. Lord, I... I ask you to ordain them and commission them and give them a, a, a like you did David of the Bible, a second or third anointing or a fresh anointing, David called it. We don't know how many anointings he had, but he did say, I'll be anointed with fresh anointing. God, today, we ask you, Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, use them. Oh, Lord, use them, God. Oh, God, please don't refuse them. Bless them. Bless them, Almighty God. Glory to Jesus. After we anoint you, go back to your seat and reach, reach out for the others that's, that's still getting anointed. Thank the Lord. And we like for the preachers. Not more, uh, Brother Dixon, you know that song, Jesus Use Me. I like. I always like that song for this. I want the ministers, handmaids, and the ministers first, and then the rest line up over here. Thank the Lord that wants to be anointed with a fresh anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory. Thank you, Jesus.